Okay, it is cold outside and we're on the river. Today we're gonna to talk about some considerations with fly fishing in the winter and getting to know the bugs that you need to know. Watch to the end because we'll actually show you some of the pictures and get some really good close-ups so you can see what we're talking about. So biggest question we get asked is how do I know what to use when I get to the river? And the winter is one of those little bit trickier times because you're going to come down to the river and you're not going to see much on the water. You're not going to see much in the air. And so it could be a little confusing as far as what you use. If you've seen some of our other, of our other entomology videos, we talk about ways to collect the bugs and kind of get your bearings when it comes to figuring out what they're eating. Now, one of the things that I get asked a lot too is, well, once I get to know a body of water or a river, do I need to do the same bug collection techniques in order to fish it each time? So short answer is no. If you kind of know time of year, you know what bugs are gonna be around. For example, now we're in the winter, high time for midges. We know there are a lot of sow bugs in this river, um, but there's a lot of other bugs too. And just because it's the winter time and they're not hatching, there are salmon fly or stone flies, a few salmon flies, uh, some drakes, tons of betas, PMDs, caddis, and of course midges all over the place. But these are bugs that live in the water. Technically they live in the water year round until they hatch and fly off and do their thing and die. But those bugs are still in the water even today. So as you decide what you're going to throw you can kind of break that down into two categories or three really is dry flies and in this case we're not seeing too much rising so we're probably not going to have to worry about any bugs that float on the surface but we'll show you some of those as uh, larva and pupa and then if we've kind of ruled out bugs on the surface in this case we've seen a few kind of rise but it's not consistent enough to say oh hey i'm going to tie on a dry fly or or uh, toss to this fish that's rising now if they were consistent that'd be another story and that's be that would be something that we'd want to key in on so when i first arrive again if, let's assume this is kind of an unfamiliar river or if i haven't been here in a while it's always a good idea to kind of get your bearings and i always start out by collecting the bugs so we'll talk about three different ways to collect your bugs. And again, we've gone over this in the other video, but primarily, primarily we're talking number one, uh, seine. So you could get a seine out of a kit. We've, we'll list some in the description um, that's got kind of everything a seine. You can just see what's in the drift. That's important because what you turn over on a rock or a branch or something, which is the second technique, isn't always gonna be what's in the drift. So you could see some bugs under a rock and the fish may not be keying on those at the time. But we would know if we were to sane the water and collect those samples as the drift is dictating that we will likely find something more active and see what the fish are focusing on. So then the second technique, like I mentioned, is rocks and branches and the detritus and whatever you want. And that's just kind of, again, you kind of kick around, pick up rocks, turn them over, um, submerged branches are always good anything that you can find in the water that would indicate what the fish might be eating but more specifically what's there so and then the third technique would be samples from the throat of a live trout um, we'll also show you how to take those samples uh, as effectively and as safely as possible but those are the three main ways that you can gather your samples to see what's going on so we'll start off by doing our first method which is in the drift but i forgot the saying today and we're not going to show you how that works but we're going to switch to the second one which is just gathering them we do have a sane video in another or a sane technique in another video you can check that out but we're going to go ahead and gather some samples just from the rocks and see what we have with this okay so i'm down here in the water i picked up a couple of rocks so the first big rock turned up a cased caddis a very bright greenish yellow um, lots of caddis in this river but again that's one that you're not going to see moving a ton right now but they're still around and you can certainly have success fishing caddis larvae this time of year what we found on this rock and another one here um, we've got some little betas now that's a little tiny tiny guy and we've got some midge larvae you can't see those guys very well this is actually a good one 
We've got a nice juicy caddis on that. Here is a little midge larva. Now those midge larvae are going to be everywhere and that's probably one of the the focuses that you'll want in the winter. So this uh, bigger rock we've kind of hit the jackpot. We've got lots of caddis. Um, this little guy is a sow bug. Lots of sow bugs in the water. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bust out my little entomology kit. In my previous video we used a different one. This is a CNF Faber. Fabre? I don't know. Sabre? Sabre? And it comes with some cool little vials. So I can fill this up with water, pop off the top like so, and give a little water in there, a little more. And now I'm going to put my sow bug buddies in there. Now normally I don't necessarily need to know what sow bugs look like, but sometimes it's a good idea to grab new samples so that you can see the differences in size, maybe different times of the year. Sow bugs come in all shapes and sizes at pretty much all times of the year, so they are ubiquitous and they're a very important food source to the trout. This little kit has a cool feature. So it has this little tray, and just to gauge the size, I could stick that in there. And these little, the big squares are 10 millimeters across, or uh, each one is one millimeter, each little one. So you could kind of gauge the sizing if you're going to want to come by uh, back later and kind of look at those. Another cool thing is it has this little magnification loop or whatever you want to call it. This just allows you to get a little bit more magnification. Something this size is not as big a deal, but uh, I'll grab a smaller one. Know if you can see that but so that's like a size 24 right now but these guys are going to grow up to be maybe size 20s and 18s but again it's a good way for you to get uh, a little buggy and the nice thing about this kit and unfortunately we don't have a ton of these in stock but they are very convenient it's a, in a cnf box it has a little pair of tweezers that you can use to grab and move things around um, it has a bulb for extraction of the bugs from uh, live trout. And then it has the, the little vials. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and grab some samples. Hopefully if Lance catches a fish, aside from the 50 he's already caught this morning. And uh, see if we can get some samples there. Okay, so another type of sample that you can get is a live sample. And so what I've got here is a little vial. Lance has agreed to lend me some bugs from this pretty brown trout he just caught. What you got there, Mr. Egan? All right, what we're gonna do is take our pump, fill it full of water, maybe squeeze out about half of it and keep the, my thumb depressed on the uh, bulb. I'm gonna wet my hand, flip this fish upside down. Then we're going to insert it into the fish till we get a little bit of resistance, squeeze in the rest of the water, slowly extract until you see the bugs, and then we can quickly release the fish. And then we will put these into this vial to see what he's been eating. You know what he's eating? There are sow, sow bugs. bugs. Uh, maybe some midges? Yep. And we'll get some close-up shots of that, but uh, that's probably the quickest way, or the most accurate way to see what they're eating most recently. Um, but again, you kind of have to use a combination of both of them, whether it's a throat sample or rocks or drift, uh, just to be able to know what you're facing when you're fishing. So we've shown you a couple, three different ways to collect the samples. Now again, to summarize, um, as you can see in some of the, the the close-up shots that we have of these, there's, like I said, sow bugs, there's a crane fly larva, there's a bunch of small midges, uh, little betas nymphs, and the thing is that those are available in the water for the trout at any given time during the year. We typically want to say that midges are going to be a little bit more productive right now, but as an example, now although we didn't find one today, there are a lot of sculpins in this water. A lot of the fish that Lance has been catching have been on his poacher pattern, which is a basically a sculpin or kind of leech imitation, but it's sculpin colored. Don't ever discount the fact that you can, in the winter, catch fish 
on bugs that are not necessarily super prevalent or popping on a day like today. So as an example, we could take some of these little sow bugs and pair that with maybe a small midge pattern if we're gonna be nymphing. If we were to see some fish rising, and again, we're collecting bugs out of the drift, we'd see a lot of midges. Then you'd kind of have to determine if you're looking at emergers and or adults, which you can tell by the rise form. Google that if you want to get a little bit more information on it. However, as you can see, the vials help us collect all these bugs, help us catalog them. I typically, when I'm fishing a new water or maybe a new hatch on a water that I haven't fished a lot, I'll take the samples. I usually like to photograph them, because I'm a big nerd, with uh, some sort of measurement device so I can gauge how big they are. Because inevitably, the next year at this time, I'm going to say, ah, how, how big were those sow bugs? Or how big was that salmon fly? Or whatever. So those are some things that you can keep in mind. The shots we have here in the vials, there's so many different types and flavors of bugs in the water. Uh, don't limit yourself. Experiment some different nymphs, different techniques. If they're hitting dries, you can switch over to the dries. But knowing your bugs is very helpful. All of these bugs are brought to you by Mother Nature. Uh, you can't buy the bugs on our store. You probably can't even buy this uh, CNF entomology kit, but maybe we have it. So check it out. We'll list the link below. We'll also have a couple of other bug collection goodies uh, down in the description. But at the end of the day, check us out at flyfishfood.com. We've got all these things that can help you figure out what to use, how to catch fish, and uh, have success out on the water.